Song structure in Logic Pro for iPad. It's a little different. If you're coming from GarageBand, we don't have things like song sections. We've got markers. So we can't shuffle things around by moving song sections. We have to actually move our audio instead. And to be very honest, the markers are not my favorite thing in the world to use. I will show them to you in this video, but I'll also show you how to add in a whole new section if you want to add a section, not at the end, not at the start, but in the middle. It's a bit clunky, but it's not actually as hard as you might first think. Welcome back to Song Timber. My name's Pete Johns. Uh, we are a few episodes in here. You can check out the other episodes in the description. There's a link to a playlist there if you want to see how I wrote this song, recorded the demo, started arranging it. But today we're going to dive deep into the final arrangement of this song and making sure that we have all the sections clearly defined here because I like to have that just as a bit of a... a a, a way to see what's going on here. Now, I because the bass is like the only instrument that's going to be throughout this entire track, the first thing we're going to do here is instead of using song sections, I'm actually going to bring the bass up to the very top here above the drummer, and I'm going to use this to mark out our sections. That way, everything below it will know where things are going to be, and if we need to split things and move things, we'll have them arranged. So, with our bass here, we start right on here. So that's gonna be our lead in. Uh, and by the way, take one step back here. We're in trim mode here at the moment. What I'm gonna do is go into split mode and just use this rough bass uh, here as our placeholder for each section, and then just rename them based on what section they are. So I'm going to hit the trim button, the split button here, and pull down on that one, and now we've got two sections there. If we go back to this one, we can start naming these. So for this first section here, I'm actually going to come down here and go to my inspector, and you can see there the names there. The other way to name this is to tap and go to name and color and rename, but this is just an easy way to get to all your options here in Logic Pro for iPad. So we are, instead of using this base, we are going to change the name of this one and we're going to call it Lead In. Actually, we're going to do this. In, someone said to me, use capitals when you do this because it makes it much clearer and easier to read. And look, they're right because that does look easier to read than doing it in lowercase. So now we just need to work out how long this first verse is. Now, uh, so the intro is the next section here. And our first verse comes in just here where our uh, vocals come in. But the weird thing is that with this one, if we hit play. Don't need no crashes on my lawn. So musically... All the vocals will always come in just before. This is why I'm not using the vocals. This is why I'm using the bass for this because technically the verses are going to start da 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 da, da like almost a whole bar before the actual song section. So it's going to make it a bit clunky, but I'm going with splitting it right here on these bars so that we have these eight bar, 16 bar kind of chunks. So let's hit our split button again here. We're going to tap on the bass here and uh, line it up right on the bar marker pull down, and then we've got some additional sections there. So once again, we can tap on this. Let's go back to trim mode. We don't want to split anything else. And we can rename this again. Now, if you're already in here, if we double tap there, if you've got a keyboard, hit Command A. That's going to highlight everything, or at least it should. It didn't because it wants to call me a liar. Command A, there you go. And then hit your delete key. And then we can just type it straight in. So this we're going to type intro again in nice capitals. And then verse one is going to be this next section here. Let's play this. Launch pad. Don't need no coffee for my cream. And we'll find where it goes to the chorus. I clutches on my head Sometimes the things that happen make me want to scream. And over here on bar 20. And I know. So that bar 20 marker is where it goes into our chorus. And again, they all start a little earlier. So just keep that in mind. And the good thing is here, there's a natural break there because I messed up the bass recording. So we can just do this. So we can rename this one again, use command A and call this verse one. And you can use markers for this. I've shown that in another video. I may use it here. I'm, I'm undecided, actually. Uh, I may actually just avoid markers entirely because they don't work that well here in Logic Pro for iPad. Uh, then we can change this one to chorus. And I think this is the entire chorus, but we can change it if it's not. So we'll hit that. So here's the chorus section. Oh, 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 oh. I got a lot to learn. There you go. And then we've got this little interlude bit here before we go into the second verse. So let's just keep playing this. Don't need no 
Yeah, there you go. So that's the section where it comes back in. So I like to I like to mark off things like this. Like it's not really a bridge. It's not a middle eight because it's only four bars, but it's a, a little interlude. So I just call it interlude. You can call it what you like. Let's tap on this again and we'll change this to interlude. And uh, the reason for this is just to have a bit of structure around what you're doing. At this point, when I'm doing the final kind of arrangement of a song, I like to have a little more structure. So here's our second verse here which is going to go from there through to about here, I believe. And I yep, so there's our chorus point. So we'll just grab that, tap it, hit the split button again, and drop that down. You are going to have to jump between these. There are, there are keyboard shortcuts for them. I should remember them by now, shouldn't I? So let's rename this one to verse again. This is going to be verse two that we have now. And uh, down here, this is going to be chorus two. Uh, so we can tap that one, we can rename it and delete the old one and put chorus to. Uh, and now at this stage, we have this extended section here, which is, so this is going to be the solo slash bridge. And then going into some la la. So we'll leave all, we'll leave all this section as just one because it's just going to do the la la. And then there's our final section. So and I know, which starts from here. And I'm just going to adjust these drums because I don't know why the drama was all ever at the wrong spot there. <laughs> That'll make it set the drums sound a bit better. So let's put our final split in here. Because this is going to go into our uh, add to our final chorus section and outro. So this one, if we go back and turn that off of split, this is going to be uh, we'll just call it solo because it's a big solo section there. And then this final section is going to be uh, our final chorus. So I'm just going to put final chorus there. So what have we got now? Well, we've got ourselves a nicely organised track here using the bass track. Now, I did mention the markers. Let's just have a quick look at what markers could do. The reason I don't use markers is when we're going to do what we're doing next, which is adding in a new section, it's not really going to make much sense. But if we wanted to add the markers, we can tap here. We can customize our global tracks, show multiples, and turn on, say, the marker track here. And with the marker track, what we didn't do that. <laughs> customize global tracks, marker. Oh, there we go. And then we have to show them. We have to bring it down here. So you can see that the chords, which we'll play with in a uh, in a future video, which will be coming soon, but we've got markers here, and we can uh, we can add these in. Um, so if we wanted to add a marker, say to the front section here where our intro is, we just hit the plus button here, and yeah, see how it like adds it all the way across, and you've got to kind of adjust these, and then when you move things around, they don't really work in my in my experience. So your mileage may vary. And maybe we'll add in markers for future just once we've got everything set up. So if we wanted to rename this marker, we uh, again tap on the inspector button over here. And there's the marker name. And we can change it here. So we'll just call this one uh, intro to match that. So we'll come back and explore markers a little more. See, even when you hit enter it, it kind of wants, it doesn't, it doesn't go straight in. And uh, yeah, I, I don't use markers a heap for that reason. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this, which is what do I want to do here? Well, I've decided that between the solo and this final chorus, I want to add in another verse. <laughs> the song's a bit too short. I want a verse three, and it's actually going to be easy to do because I've got all these split out here. See, I've got the verse two there. It's already split for the drums and the bass, but what we need to do is split out all the rest of this stuff to move it across. I don't need the vocals because I'm going to be recording new vocals, but I need to split out all of these. Now, I could do what we did before and tap each one of these and split them separately, or we can actually split them all at once by using multi-select. So if you're not familiar with multi-select, this little button here, this turns on multi-select here in Logic Pro. And now, if we tap one, two, three, see how it selected all three of those? So we've got our guitars, our rhythm, and our lead left and right guitars all selected. If we wanted to do vocals as well, we could, and we could just tap down on these ones as well. But from here, if we get the split now, and we go to our split tool and tap on one of these, see how it does the whole lot like that? It's given us this big line down here. So now when we shook and we cut it, look at that, it goes down all of them. We can do the same thing at the end here. So it just makes things really quick and convenient because we can do multiple at once. And it now means we've got this block 
that we can move, that we can create. But before we do that, we need to create some space to put it into. So uh, we need to work out how many bars this is. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight bars. It's a pretty easy modular kind of song for this. So we need to create eight bars in the section we need it. So guess what? We need to use our multi-select again here because between the solo and the final chorus is where we want to add this. So once again, turn on multi-select and we're going to grab all of these. So these are already split, as you can see. We don't have to split those, but we need to split out our guitar and those guitars. And we will split these vocals just because we have them in place there at the end. Anyway, we do want to keep that like final chorus vocal there. So they're all in place. We hit the split button and we tap on one of them, line it up in the right position for the split and pull down. And like magic, all of those are separated. You've got to keep it separated. Uh, so what we can do now, now these ones at the bottom here, these are just previous ideas and things. So we could split these out and move these as well, but these are going to be deleted uh, in the final version anyway. So they don't really need to be concerned with this. Uh, what we're going to do now is grab all of these and bring them across by eight bars. So we will grab, and we'll grab these drums as well at the top here. These are the old drums. So if we grab it down the bottom here, we can tap and hold, drag over all of them. We didn't quite do it well, did we? Because we didn't get that one. Let's do it from the top left instead. So tap and hold, drag over, and you're going to multi-select a whole bunch of these. And now if we zoom in, grab two fingers and separate them apart, we can make sure that we give ourselves eight bars. So we're here at 56, so we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need to bring it over to 64. So all we need to do is tap and hold anywhere in here uh, without the split, Turn on our actual trim, tap and hold here, and drag these across. Okay, now it's <laughs> now it hasn't reselected those. So let's do that again, because we were in split mode. Let's make sure that we are not in split mode, we're in trim mode to start with. Tap and hold, select them all, including those vocals, grab them, and move them on across. And what the error is here? Ah, uh, it's that we've frozen this track. And you can see there, sorry, we can't move it, you've frozen it. And I did that deliberately because I kept accidentally moving it. So to unfreeze it, we can do that. And now if we tap and hold, there you go. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? So we can move those over to bar 64. Let's just zoom in here again and make sure that we do indeed have eight bars of space here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We do. And now all we need to do is grab this verse two section and move it across. Now, I want this to be really kind of laid back. I actually only really want the, the bass the drums and the rhythm guitar. I don't want these lead guitar parts. I want this to be really stripped down. In fact, it might even just be the bass and the drums, but we'll do the all three of them for now. Multi-select on, we'll select the three of these because that's the easiest way to do that. We can uh, tap, tap on them. Actually, no, we can't because we've got multi-select still on. Turn multi-select back off. <laughs> now tap on them, tap again and hit copy and just come to this new section that we have over here. Tap, tap again, paste at playhead and look at that. We've got this new section in here and it says verse 2-1, we can actually change that here because we'll, we'll uh, tap, tap off, tap this one to select it, come down here to our inspector and where it's got verse 2.1, this will be verse 3, this new third verse that we're going to add in to our track here because it just wasn't quite long enough and uh, I think we need a big breakdown. So the idea of this, if you've been following along with this song, is that when it gets to here, uh, it's going to go into a really kind of very laid back sort of quiet verse. So let's uh, take a listen. La, 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 and I know. So instead of having all the lead guitars, it even, it might even just be the drums and bass with a vocal and then just bring it right back into a very big loud final chorus. This song really just, it, it needed a breakdown. It was a little bit full on. It needed some uh, some dynamic range. So what we've got now is we've got our lead in here. We've got our intro. We've got our first verse, chorus, our interlude there, our second verse, our second chorus, a solo section there with a bit of a bridge, and then this nice uh, transition into a little breakdown like this. And, I know. and we won't have that bit of vocal there, right? So it'll actually sound more like this. And when we record those final guitars, it won't go quite as abruptly between there. 
but it will just and the drums might even sort of just go really quiet and it's just like da, 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 just a, just a single vocal uh, bass and drum so that when we come into this big final chorus you really hear the difference and I just think that it, it just needed this it needed this extra section in fact we can just tap on these drummers and let's just uh, so I remember what I wanted here if we open the drummer let's just bring this all the way down and make it really non-complex so that it's just going to do a really gentle kind of drum pattern through here la, la, la. turn off the fills So it's just going to sit there on the ride symbol throughout that section. And I think that that sounds pretty cool. So that is my song structure from here. What do we need to do? Well, we need to get recording and mixing. So these are all just placeholder recordings at this point in time. We'll be back to record in the vocals, uh, to touch up the bass uh, guitar in here, to uh, make sure we have some drums for this and uh, re-record some of those guitar parts and move things around and then mix, master and be ready to release. So that is where we're at with this song at the moment. Hopefully you got a few tips about a song arranging especially here in logic pro for ipad why i don't really like the markers track which you can check out my video on markers if you want to find it just search pete john's logic pro markers and you'll see why i think they're kind of clunky and this other technique of just using one of your tracks as your markers because you can name them and you can move them around a whole lot easier there also how we can create space and change up because we don't have it's the one thing that logic pro doesn't have that GarageBand does have which is song sections. Don't forget now to save and make sure that you save out a version of your project. And something I didn't say at the start was create a duplicate version. So I went from eight to nine. So to do that, tap and hold and tap on duplicate and make sure that you're using version control. It's the best way to make sure that you're not losing any of the hard work that you've done in case you completely mess something up. That is going to do it for this one. I hope you found it useful and I hope you join me for the future Song Temper videos if you're here at the moment. If you're in the future, this song might be done. Check all the links down in the description. Remember, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating. I'll see you next time right here on Studio Live today.